This is the small rig 3457 video fluid head. So I'm going to unbox it quickly before I start with the review. So if you want to jump forward to the review, it would be around the six minute mark or so. But I just want to include the unboxing so that if some people want to see what's included in the box and I don't know what what writing there is on the box or anything else they can see exactly what they will get if they do purchase this product so feel free to skip forward to the six minute mark if you just want to go to the review so nothing special um, this is just a small rig box very plain and there's not much writing or any documentation included and it's made in China according to what it says on the box but in, in my experience uh, made in China these days actually means high quality and isn't necessarily a re reflection of bad quality which was the case many years ago so let me see if I can get this open I always struggle a little bit with these boxes Okay. So I was expecting to see something, but uh, there's a piece of foam on top of it. No leaflet, no manual, nothing. Um, but that's the fluid head. And it all seems to come in one single piece. So there isn't any peripherals, or manuals, or screws, or adapters, or anything included everything is joined as a one, as one single product so this seems to be the knob for the panning rotation let's see how loose we can make it okay that just came out actually expose the grease. It's a bit weird. I wasn't expecting that. But yeah, that doesn't seem to be much control over the friction levels. Okay, this seems to be the tilt lever. The tilt seems to be a little bit stronger than what the pan was. That seems to be the lever for the handle so you can rotate the handle in any direction pretty much and it should be a telescoping handle but you have to make it tight before you can actually turn it and open the handle which is a little bit annoying but there you go if you tighten the handle first and then you twist the handle you can telescope it out to a longer length it's about 31 and a half centimeters even though the actual website or the official documentation says it's 33 centimeters I measured it a few times and it's 31 centimeters every time this might be an advantage that you can take it off altogether so if you want a smaller compact head and you could do that and that's accessory mount and this is the knob for the clamp Okay, there goes the release plate. <laughs> and that's the rotation part of the mount. So you have two rot rotation parts. One is on the mount and one is on the base of the actual fluid head. It's an Arco Swiss plate. Because in theory, you could also use the rotation part of the mount as a for panning. This is to lock in place the center of gravity for the mount section. So if I loosen it again, then I can slide it back and forth to get the right center of gravity. Seems a bit of an overkill for a small fluid head, but nevertheless, it's a nice feature. And there's the hexagonal wrench you can pop out if you press it there and it slots in so there's a magnet there I don't know if you can see it here but there's a magnet which sticks it in and you can pop it out from the other side 
I like the idea of having the hexagonal wrench included in the product itself because it means I will have it always have it with me and a small bubble spirit level as well that can be useful if you want to level it I'm not a big fan of this handle though that's a quarter inch 20 screw by the way so I guess if you wanted to take out the handle and use that quarter inch 20 screw as an additional accessory mount you could do that there's an accessory mount screw or thread on the other side as well so in theory you could have two accessory mounts remove the handle put something on the right side and then use the official accessory mount to put something on the left hand of the fluid head as well anyway so that's pretty much all that's included in the package this is the small rig 3457 video fluid head it is made from aluminium alloy and it has a high build quality feel to it. It weighs 512 grams and has a load capacity of 5 kilograms. It is 10.4 centimeters tall. The bottom base diameter is 4.6 centimeters and the top plate is 5 centimeters long by 3.8 centimeters wide. The quick release plate is Arco Swiss compatible and has two quarter inch 20 screws that can be tightened by hand without the need for additional tools but they can also be tightened using the supplied Allen key wrench or any flat screwdriver. It is possible to remove the screws from the release plate if you want to only use a single screw. All you have to do is move the screw to the end of the plate and unscrew it until it comes out. The quick release plate has two small protrusions which should stop the camera from falling forward or backward if the release plate isn't fully tightened. However, the protrusions on the release plate are very small and the notches on the clamp section are very shallow so I'm not convinced that they will function as a security mechanism. Also, when I compare this to the Ulanzi U190 fluid head, it definitely appears to be less safe. This is the knob for tightening or loosening the clamp, which holds the quick release plate in place. And on the opposite side is the mount rotation adjustment screw, which allows you to lock or loosen the rotation tension in order to rotate the mount so that you can mount your camera in any direction which is required depending on the release plate or cage that is being used. The mount rotation can also be used for panning, even though this is not its primary function. This is the mount slide lock, which lets you move the mount section of the video head backward or forward to adjust the balance for center of gravity. This is an easy way to adjust the balance after the camera has already been mounted. So there are three options to adjust the center of gravity on this fluid head. You can refine the location of the camera on the release plate before tightening the screw, since the screw location is adjustable. Or you can place the release plate slightly forward or backward before tightening the clamp on the release plate. Or you can use the mount lock lever on the side to unlock the mount section, which allows the mount section to slide forward or backward, which includes the clamp and the release plate on top. This is an accessory mount, which has a quarter inch 20 threaded hole for attaching devices such as lights, microphones, or anything else with a magic arm. I like the idea of using a small magic arm to connect the directional microphone here, 
because that means when I move the fluid head to point the camera at the moving subject, the directional microphone will also point in the correct direction and pick up the sound from the correct location. Also, this means that I can use the cold shoe mount on my camera for attaching something else, such as an external monitor or an external recording device. This lever is the tilt lock, so that the camera can tilt forward or backward. The fluid head can tilt from minus 60 degrees to plus 90 degrees, so 90 degrees forward and 60 degrees backward. The tilt lever seems to be a friction lock, so there isn't sufficient control for adjusting the tilt tension. This seems to be a known issue which is mentioned on the small rig website. The small rig official website states that heavy cameras and lenses may affect the tilt experience of the head. The 360 degree panning is supported on the fluid head and there are two panning sections, one for rotating the mount section which includes the clamp section with the release plate. This is primarily used for adjusting the location and orientation of the clamp section for the quick release plate and the camera, which provides flexibility if you are using a cage or a release plate which needs to be mounted in a different orientation. Also there is a panning section at the bottom base of the fluid head which is what is primarily used for the panning motion when shooting video. Both the mount rotation section and the pan section have markings for 360 degrees, with a visible line for every 5 degrees and a visible numeric value every 15 degrees. This is the knob for adjusting the damping tension of the panning movement, but it cannot be made completely loose, and if you turn the knob too much it will fall out of place and expose the grease inside the fluid head. This knob acts as both a pan lock and for adjusting the panning tension. Therefore, the adjustment granularity for dampening the tension is limited. Nevertheless, it seems like the panning movement on this fluid head can be made slightly looser than what is possible on the Ulanzi U190 video head, which is particularly good for lighter setups. This is a bubble spirit level, which can be used to make sure the fluid head is leveled correctly. This is the handle rotation adjustment lever, which allows you to set the angle of the handle and lock it in place. The handle grip angle can be adjusted, but the handle is completely straight, unlike most handle grips, which have a grip section that is slightly bent at an angle for easier holding. This is a telescoping handle, which means it can be extended or collapsed as necessary. It is 33 cm long when extended and 14 cm when collapsed. It appears that the mechanism used in this telescopic handle is identical to the mechanism used in the Velbon Ultrastick Super 8 monopod. I'm not 100% sure about this, but the locking mechanism feels exactly the same. It is possible to remove the handle altogether for a lighter and more compact setup but that means you need to use the camera itself for movements, which is likely to result in a less smooth video footage. A hexagonal wrench, also known as Allen key, is provided with the fluid head, which fits into a magnetic slot on the fluid head, so it is easy to place it there and ensures you always have it with the fluid head. The Allen key protrudes slightly from the opposite side of the fluid head, so you can press on the protruding part to pop it out. This is substantially easier than having to pull it out while working against the magnetic slot. This is something I found difficult to do when using the Ulanzi U190 video head. The bottom base diameter is 4.6 cm, and this is the 3.8 inch 16 tripod mount, which can be used to attach this fluid head to any standard tripod. It is worth mentioning that most tabletop tripods and vlogging tripods typically have a quarter inch 20 screw, which means you need to purchase an adapter separately. So if you intend to use this video head with a small tripod such as the Manfrotto Pixie mini tripod, you need to purchase an adapter separately since that mini tripod has a quarter inch 20 screw. 
small rig sells these adapters under the name small rig quarter inch to three eight inch adapter one six one zero the model number is cf fm zero one dash one six one zero or one six one zero for short because the majority of tabletop tripods and vlogging tripods have a quarter inch 20 screw instead of the 3 8 inch 16 screws that are found on standard tripods some video heads such as the Ulanzi U190 video head come with a converter so you can immediately mount it on any type of tripod however with this tripod you need to buy an adapter separately which is very cheap and lets you achieve the same results Some tripods and monopods have a retractable 3 8 inch 16 screw with a quarter inch screw underneath it, which means either thread size holes will function on these, such as the iFootage Cobra 2 series tripods and monopods. This fluid head is better than a ball head and any other small fluid head on the market. Also, the panning motion seems to be smoother than the Ulanzi U190. However, it is not a good fluid head in terms of controlling the smoothness of motion, nor does it have the lightness and compactness of a very small fluid head. Nevertheless, I don't believe there is currently anything better on the market, so I intend to use it with a monopod for casual video shooting, but for any professional work I will revert back to using a tripod with a substantially larger video head. When designing a fluid head, a lot of compromises have to be made, and it is impossible for a video head to serve all purposes. So in my opinion, there are two approaches that can be taken. One is to create a good video head, but the compromise will be that it is large and heavy. The other option is to create a compact and lightweight video head, but the compromise will be that it has less control over the smoothness of motion. This fluid head leans towards the compact and lightweight option, but it has favored some luxury features over having a smaller size and lighter weight. I believe the additional weight would have been better used to improve the motion smoothness control of the video head instead of non-necessary features that add weight and size to the fluid head without improving its performance, even though those features contribute to better usability. For example, I would have preferred if some features were left out in order to make this video head smaller and lighter, such as the mount slide feature, since the quick release plate can be used to serve a similar purpose. Also, the mount rotation feature is a luxury, not a necessity. Removing these features would have made the video head smaller and lighter. These are typical features to accommodate camera cages and larger setups. However, anyone wanting to use a larger setup is more likely to use a larger and better video head. So, in my opinion, these design decisions are not in line with the target audience for this video head. Aside from my personal perspective on design decisions and compromises, I have two minor complaints. One, I really dislike the fact that the knobs used to adjust the damping motion can be completely unscrewed and fall out which exposes the grease in the fluid head. Two, this video head is being marketed as a lightweight video head. However, a reduction in weight hasn't been prioritized over other features. So there is some discrepancy between what has been built and what is being marketed. Although the discrepancy is not as bad as the Canon R5 being marketed as a camera for 8K video recording when it overheats quickly and cannot perform its primary marketed function. Anyway, those are two minor complaints that I have about this fluid head. For my portability requirement, I prefer the minimalist approach of the Ulanzi U190 video head, which is smaller and lighter. However, the panning motion is smoother on this video head, which makes this video head more suitable for shooting video despite its disadvantages such as larger size and heavier weight. Anyway, please let me know if you have any questions about this video head or want me to demonstrate a certain aspect of it in more detail. To my knowledge, this video head is the best compact video head that is currently available on the market. But if you know of any other one, please let me know as I like to keep my kit as compact and light as possible. I'm going to do a full comparison of this fluid head and the Ulanzi U190 in the next video. So if you want to see the comparison of these two fluid heads, press the subscribe button to be notified once that video is published.